In the early hours of April 2nd, 1982, a detachment of Argentine commandos landed on the Falkland Islands, a South Atlantic archipelago contested between the United Kingdom and Argentina. The men then moved overland towards the settlement's capital, Port Stanley, ready to take it back once and for all, thus launching a long and tense confrontation between the two nations. After the Argentinian troops occupied the islands, the British government dispatched a large naval task force to the archipelago, and the eyes of the whole world were focused on the undeclared war. What's more, it is said that in the heat of the moment, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher used the French president as a pawn and even considered launching a nuclear attack on the Latin American country, details of which were only revealed more than two decades later. The Falklands War In early 1982, Argentinian President Leopoldo Galtieri authorized the invasion of the British-owned Falkland Islands. Located in the South Atlantic Ocean, only 300 miles away from the Patagonian border, Argentina had long claimed the archipelago as part of its territory. The decision to invade the Falklands was designed by the government to bolster the national pride in their long-held claim while simultaneously drawing away attention from economic and human rights problems in the country. On April 2, 1982, Argentine Navy forces landed on the islands and captured the capital of Port Stanley in two days, despite fierce resistance from the Royal Marines stationed in the area. In response, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom Margaret Thatcher ordered the immediate assembly of a robust naval task force to engage the Argentine Navy and Air Force before making an amphibious assault. After the House of Commons approval on April 3rd, Thatcher formed a war cabinet led by Admiral Sir John Fieldhouse. The Royal Navy Task Force for the Falkland War consisted of several groups, with the two largest centering around aircraft carriers HMS Hermes and HMS Invincible. Led by Rear Admiral Sandy Woodward, these groups housed Sea Harrier fighter aircraft that would provide cover for the traveling fleet. In mid-April, Admiral Fieldhouse's task force began their trip south, with a large fleet of tankers and cargo ships for resupply purposes. A total of 127 ships served in the task force, including 43 warships, 22 Royal Fleet Auxiliaries, and 62 merchant vessels. On May 21st, the British troops arrived on the islands and launched a relentless fight against the outnumbered Argentinian forces that went well into June. By the 14th, encircled on land and completely blockaded at sea, Argentine commander General Mario Menendez realized that his situation was hopeless and surrendered his 9,800 men, effectively ending the conflict and returning the ownership of the islands to the United Kingdom. In total, the Falkland War lasted 74 days. Aftermath While both governments declared the islands a war zone, the conflict was never officially declared as a war between the two nations. For Argentina, the Falklands War cost the Navy a submarine, a light cruiser, and 75 aircraft, with over 1,600 casualties and 11,300 captured men. In addition, the naval and air force defeat led to the removal of President Galtieri only three days after the fall of Port Stanley. However, the Latin American nation asserted and still claims that the Falklands are Argentine territory and thus characterized its military activity as the mere reclamation of its own territory. On the other side of the ocean, the victory provided a much needed boost to the United Kingdom's national confidence. The outcome also ensured the victory for the conservative Thatcher government in the subsequent 1983 elections, where the Iron Lady was re-elected with an increased majority the following year. While most of Britain asserts that the Falklands conflict was a clear victory from the start, there are some unofficial theories, based on secret documents and personal accounts, that at one point Thatcher believed the United Kingdom was in so much trouble that she considered a nuclear alternative. A Special Patient on the afternoon of May 7, 1982, Parisian psychoanalyst Ali Magoudi paced back and forth, waiting for the arrival of his latest patient, French President François Mitterrand. Upon the President's arrival 45 minutes later, the psychoanalyst was shocked to find out that his patient was not interested in talking about his childhood, his personal life, or his dreams. In fact, all President Mitterrand wanted to talk about was none other than Margaret Thatcher's retaliation against the Argentines in the Falkland Islands. President Mitterrand and Thatcher, who he used to call an impossible woman, had a difference of opinions to settle. According to the French president, Thatcher had just threatened him with dropping a nuclear bomb on the Argentinian mainland if Mitterrand did not give her the secret code to the French-made weapons in the hands of the Buenos Aires Navy and Air Force. 
Only days before, on May 4th, in the middle of the Falklands battle, an Exocet missile fired from an Argentinian-owned Super Etendard aircraft of French design. A French-built anti-ship missile that saw its first wartime launch during the Falklands War, the Exocet was significantly feared by the British, as its various versions could be launched from surface vessels, submarines, helicopters, and fixed-wing aircraft. The missile then hit the British ship HMS Sheffield, a destroyer in the British task force steaming to the Falkland Islands, inflicting over 60 casualties and causing the vessel to be scuttled. Immediately, top British naval commanders concluded that this powerful French-made weapon was so effective that it could put their entire operation at risk. Thatcher then took the opportunity to pressure President Mitterrand, since all the equipment with which the attack was carried out was made in his country. Mitterrand then pledged to cooperate with Thatcher. According to his former aide, Jacques Attali, the French president called her the day after the invasion and told her, quote, I am with you. Attali, who also acted as his interpreter, said the Iron Lady seemed stunned by the president's support, especially as her close ally and friend Ronald Reagan dithered. As Mitterrand told the psychoanalyst in their appointment, Thatcher blamed him personally for the attack, and he caved in and gave the prime minister the codes, saying, quote, Fortunately, I yielded to her. Otherwise, I assure you, the metallic index finger of the lady would press the button. Rendezvous Mitterrand's version of the story was published in 2005 by his psychoanalyst in his book Rendezvous, The Psychoanalysis of Francois Mitterrand. According to Ali Magoudi, he met up with the French president up to two times a week with utmost secrecy at his Paris practice from 1982 to 1984. With information from his notes and personal account, the book revealed insight into the president's mysterious personality, complicated past, paranoia, and power complex. The author further reveals that Monsieur Mitterrand believed he would exact his revenge against the Iron Lady by building a tunnel under the English Channel that would destroy Britain's island status. The psychoanalyst assured his publisher that all the quotes that he attributed to Mitterrand were genuine, although he could not vouch for the truth of what the president told him. According to Magudi, this bizarre, haunting, and intimate portrayal of the former president was ordered by Mitterrand himself, who knew he would not live to see it published. In fact, the book, published in November of 2005, was planned to mark the 10th anniversary of his passing. Although Mitterrand often claimed to have brought morality into modern French politics, his legacy was often clouded by corruption scandals. However, despite such tarnished reputation, the former president remains a source of fascination for the French, who called the socialist leader who ruled France for 14 years Le Sphinx due to his mysterious aura. The Official Version Magoudi's version of the events is not the only source that seems to indicate that Margaret Thatcher considered a nuclear solution to resolve the Falkland conflict once and for all. As far back as the 1980s, there have been persistent rumors that the Royal Navy Task Force which recaptured the islands was equipped with nuclear weapons. In 2003, the United Kingdom Ministry of Defense admitted for the first time that the ships did carry nuclear armament inside them. This confirmation, almost 20 years later, came after a six-year-long battle fought by the English newspaper The Guardian, which, under the Open Government Code, pushed the Ministry of Defense to concede that seven nuclear weapons containers were damaged during a series of wartime accidents. Despite the information's release, most of the details from such incidents are still kept secret by the Ministry of Defense. The Ministry also refused to say whether HMS Sheffield, the destroyer that was hit during the Falklands War, sank to the bottom of the ocean with nuclear depth charges on board. Still, the British government insisted that there was never any genuine intention to use nuclear weapons during the war, and that it was a common practice for British warships to carry nuclear weapons during the 1980s, but it ended in 1993. The Ministry also stated that the presence of nuclear weapons did not break any disarmament treaty, namely the Tlatelolco Treaty, which prohibits the development, acquisition, test, and deployment of nuclear weapons in Latin America. According to a spokesman, a decision was taken to transfer them to other ships heading back home. The truth of whether or not the Iron Lady once considered going nuclear will continue to remain a mystery. Still, in her memoirs, the former Prime Minister recalled the French President's unwavering support during the Falklands, writing, quote, I was to have many disputes with President Mitterrand in later years, but I never forgot the debt we owed him for his personal support throughout the Falklands crisis. Thank you for watching our Dark Seas video. Please like and subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more epic stories from the wars across the years. And if you liked this video, let us know in the comments below. Stay tuned.